Good evening and welcome to My Future, I'm Rubinical. This evening, as you know, we continue in our discussion around STEM, an initiative rolled out by the Ministry of Higher, Tertiary Education, Science and Technology Development. In studio today, we have students. They're from the Chinua University of Technology and they're going to talk to us about the new program on their campus that is helping students register companies in a way that will then help them grow their ideas, grow their initiatives in a way that will ultimately lead to Zimbabwe's industrialization. So, let me introduce our guest in studio today. All right, we have uh, Petronella Nakandafa. Hello, everyone. Petronella, you have a company called PSO Business Architects, correct? Yeah. Yes, correct. And what's that all about? PSO Business Architects is a bridge between um, the departments on campus. Uh, almost every student has a business idea that they want to pursue. Uh, because our culture is of technology, innovation, and wealth creation. So everyone goes through an entrepreneurship model. And, and then people want to start the initiatives. But it's not every student who's actually confident enough to get af out there and start the initiatives. So as PSO Business Architects, we try to help people brand build their ideas. Um, most of the times it's just an idea, but it's not actually properly thought out. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we help them shape their idea, be it from engineering, a creative art and design, our own department, which is uh, the business management department. We help every student to be able to shape the idea to become something better that can be uh, then commercialized because it's not every idea that can be commercialized. So are most of these ideas new ideas in terms of a new product, right? They always say you can never reinvent the wheel. So the question is, those that are coming up with new ideas, are you helping them mold their brands in a way that helps them stand out amongst the many existing brands? Or are you encouraging them to give something unique? We are always trying to make sure that uh, their offering is unique because they're coming from a university of technology and it's all about innovation and trying to stand out. So it has to be unique. It's probably um, an old idea, but it has to have a new angle. That's why we also try to push for a PSO. Yeah, and that's basically what we try to do, to make sure that people are angling for uniqueness in their old ideas. So do you give the full package in terms of a media kit, almost, where they know how to choose the right colors for a logo, where they know how to use the right t payoff line, where they know which um, you know, uh, media outlets to use, which methods of communication. Do they use social media? Do they use print media? Do they use flyers? Do you help them with all of that? Yes, we help them with all of that uh, because it increases their visibility and that's what we're actually there for. And in terms of the type of business they are in, for example, if you're into the beauty business, right, um, we try to make sure that uh, if you, for example, want to offer beauty services to students, you are directing your message to the students and not to everyone in Chinoy. Right. We try to make sure that you use the right print, um, flyers, posters, um, social uh, network platforms like WhatsApp to do your uh, marketing of your services, right. Right. yes. So now we've got a, over 100% mobile penetration. Mm -hmm. Most people have a cell phone. Kuti imbudzi, kana kuti i Android hatizo zivi, but mobile penetration iliko. So in terms of reaching people, um, <coughs> do you feel we reach the right people? Does everyone really have access to those social media platforms? We've got to consider the amount of tariffs that people pay. Mm -hmm. The bundles, you know, people, young people always complain, I'm a bundles, you know, and you know, mm -hmm. you'll send a message or you'll send a video, people can't download it. So in an economy where we need to think of cost as well as understanding, is social media really the most effective way? Um, I like to say, not really. Why? Because it's actually not everyone who's utilizing social media at the end of the day. Because fine, we might look at the urban youth, they are utilizing that, but then there also comes the issue of terrorists you're talking about, mm -hmm. right? Um, so it's not everyone who then is able to actually go maybe on Instagram every day and check or is going to be utilizing Facebook every day. But that's when the flyers and the posters come in <laughs> for those people who are not able to utilize a social media platforms yeah. to, to see the message that we're trying to send across in terms of marketing our brands. Yes. Um, but let me now introduce the rest of our guests in the studio today. We're not alone um, <laughs> yes. here, yeah, Petronella. We also have um, the founders of Ruin Design Den, right? We have Owen Chari. Welcome. Hi. Good evening, everybody. And we also have Rumbi Zai Maramba. Welcome. Yes. Hi, everyone. 
Great, so thank you too for joining us. Tell us about your, um, your company. What is that all about? Uh, Design Den is an advertising agent company uh, which was uh, formed by uh, artist students who are um, uh, art students at the University of Technology uh, from the Department of Creative Art and Design and Fine Art. Mm -hmm. And then we have, um, it's not only formed by students from Chino University of Technology only. We have um, a student who was at Polytechnic. We have, uh, we have him on board as well in the forming of this company. Mm -hmm. So this, uh, I like how you added the fine art at the end with emphasis. Um, now many people don't fully understand or appreciate what fine art is. You know, so maybe you can expand on that for us. Okay, if we say creative art and design, uh, we are saying it is art that you use computer aid. Right. You'll be doing art but using a computer. Right. Uh, whether you're using a mobile phone, or you're using an electronic media, mm -hmm. that's creative art and design. Right, right. And then when we say fine art, um, we are talking of traditional ways of producing artworks. We are talking of uh, things like paintings, mm -hmm. drawings, sculptures, fashion, uh, designs. Um, it all comes from fine art. Now, do Zimbabweans have an appreciation for that? I get a lot of emails inviting me to the National Art Gallery for an exhibition and all that. And my, I'm always curious to know that do Zimbabweans fully appreciate that line yet? Um, or is it incorporated in other media tools and other ways that we'll appreciate it? When it comes to fine art, appreciation of art is not that big compared to other races. So the key question is, is If you want to, 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 to make money, do art but the man is that not really good you've got to set yourself apart yes yeah the the man the man is not like miracle money it doesn't come <laughs> is like anyone making miracle money <laughs> yeah you know like you know in zimbabwe we we full of people who want miracles mm. that 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 the internet money or the money that comes overnight yes right but with art we need to to work for it you produce a piece mm. we're not talking of airport art um, I, I, I can explain what is airport art. Can I try? Because as somebody who yes. buys art, there's yes. something that concerns me about fine art in particular in yes. Zimbabwe. <laughs> when I was little, Taena from Victoria Falls, Kanakutiku Kariba, and I would see these sculptures across the road, whether they're made of stone or wire, mm -hmm. right? That was, let's say, 15 years ago. The same artwork is being sold today. Yeah, in the same places. Yes. Why is that fine artists do not innovate? Why is that they don't change what they're making? It is a mask, it is a woman with a baby, it is, I mean, why are we not developing? Okay, I'll, I'll try to um, educate the viewers out there. And me. And yourself. Yes. Um, <laughs> when you buy a piece of artwork, and that piece of artwork is having a twin sister or a brother, that piece of artwork, we call it an airport art or a craft mm -hmm. because it is something that is mass produced mm -hmm. like microphones. Mm -hmm. You can go anywhere and you see the same mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. Now when it is f fine art, that piece is unique. You cannot find it anywhere. Really, really art collectors, they don't buy craft, they buy art. Uh, the difference between a craft and art is uh, if I make a portrait of yourself, you will not find it anywhere else. We have got pieces of um, like artists like Leonardo da Vinci. Right. His artworks cannot be reproduced. Right. If there is a reproduction of that art piece, it will be fake, mm -hmm. and it doesn't appreciate value. Right. And anything that you that has got no value is craft because you must Anybody produce it. <coughs> Anybody can do it. So please, can you start creating more original pieces like that you just described, where yeah. we have more Leonardo da Vinci, right? Yes. Like my, my myself as an artist, yeah. uh, I've I've got um, hundreds of artworks mm -hmm. which are not which you don't look. I cannot the find them anyway. Right. All my pieces they are not anywhere else except the one owner because I don't produce 
craft I produce art. Okay, I like that. Well, um, I suppose the proof is in the pudding, so we're going to have a look at your work and uh, yes. we, can, we can judge for ourselves. Oh, yeah. um, this is my future rabbinic, but we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Welcome back to My Future, I'm Ruveniko, and tonight we are in studio with university students from the Chinoya University of Technology, and they're telling us about each of their different uh, companies and the way that they're using them to lead toward what we call now the STEM revolution and understanding how Zimbabwe can become better using science and technology development. So, now we're going to speak briefly now to Odias Chibaya. How are you? I'm okay, how are you? Very well, thank you. So you are Cleopad Investments. Yeah, we are. Right. Who's the Cleo, who's the pad? Oh, uh, unfortunately, that's a secret that I'll keep to myself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so okay. tell us what you do. Okay, uh, Cleopad Investment uh, has got two subsidiaries. Right. The first one is a fashion house. We focus mainly on, uh, we, we house uh, a number of designers, especially mm -hmm. from the students' board. Mm -hmm. Why are we doing so? We, we're trying to bridge the gap between just doing fashion and just doing business and bridging the gap to combine the two. Mm -hmm. uh, I was inspired by my, my, my mother. Mm -hmm. She's a fashion designer. So uh, she inspired me to do, to, for, to venture into fashion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, I, I looked within the opportunity that uh, lies within the fashion industry in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. Then uh, wherever you look in Zimbabwe, we've got the Jojo Armanis, the DNGs, but all of those, they're, 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 they're imports. Mm -hmm. We're importing them. Mm -hmm. Why are we doing so when we have vast knowledge in Zimbabwe? Right. So I, I tried to look uh, within what we have. Yeah. And, uh, Clearbed Investment is trying to bridge the gap. We produce, uh, we, we branded our, our products into five categories. There's mm. the footwear, there's the um, casual wear, we've got the sports gear, we have uh, also the, the, the school uniform and the corporate wires. So at least we're trying to, 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 to make money or to make a living out of what we already have in Zimba as Zimbabweans. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So basically, I can say that's uh, all of uh, the clear fashion. It's called clear fashion, by the way. Clear fashion. Yeah, then we go to the clear media. Right. We're focusing on uh, shooting videos, mainly for weddings, uh, especially also my lectures. Mm. We, all, we film those lectures and we also then sell them to the students mm -hmm. through the, the permission from the school. Right. And also we're into comedy making and films with all the appreciation from the School of Art. Mm -hmm. So at least we are trying to bridge the gap within the schools. Not only mm -hmm. focusing on seeing uh, the business guys are there to make money of, of, out of themselves, but we're trying to say uh, the, the students from art, they have the, the, the skill. Mm -hmm. We can come and incorporate them within. Mm -hmm. The creative art students, we can try to incorporate them within. Mm -hmm. Then we can fuse in and we can make money together as we grow our nation. So you've touched on a lot of areas, right? Um, yeah. You do a number of things. But the one that had my attention was the local designers, okay. right? I'm wearing a local designer, okay? okay? And I enjoy wearing things that are specifically made for you. It's made for my body, for my size, and it's perfect for me. So this is my designer, who you can contact me, you know, for details. <laughs> but, um, you know, okay. I, I just wanted to emphasize, you know, that it, with fashion, it's something that Zimbabweans, mm -hmm. you know, it's something that they want to be wearing designer labels mm -hmm. that are internationally known. Whereas sometimes you can look just as good in something that doesn't have a tag that might be priced at $5,000. Mm -hmm. So how are you managing to encourage us all to support local fashion? Okay, uh, these days I've got a belief that I, that I walk around with. I, 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 I say international now, nowadays is overrated because mm. you have We've seen uh, the, the emergence of uh, local designers like Amo, the Saints, but people these days, I think uh, almost 60% of most Zimbabweans, they are now just used to going and buy clothes just for the sake of covering their bodies. Mm -hmm. But we think fashion is a language. Mm -hmm. You should understand your language as a person. The moment you know what you want. You understand your body language. And understand you know. your body language. So you know what fashion to pair with it. Yes. So yeah. the moment you understand yourself and your body language mm -hmm. and how you like mm -hmm. looking good, mm -hmm. then I think from that point on, you, you know who to contact and where to go. And right. Yes. Right. So I think it's more to do with yourself because mm -hmm. I can just personally put on a cloth. Mm -hmm. I have to know what I like mm -hmm. and appreciate the same thing that 
makes me feel good. But another thing that local designers need to do is to improve their quality, right? Yeah. you'll see people wearing a dress that was sewn and you can tell it was sewn because of the finish, the workmanship, right? Okay. They use these zips that are where I don't know which country they imported from, right? Something as basic as that detail. You know, I don't know whether it is the skill that they're lacking or whether it is the expertise or the finesse or just kuti what are the finishing touches that make it worthy of being on a shelf whether in a Zimbabwean store or abroad okay, that for me is a big problem it's very difficult to find a Zimbabwean designer who is professional and will make you wear something that doesn't look okay. so when it comes to, to, to workmanship within the fashion industry I think uh, it is to do with our belief as Zimbabweans. Which is? Because uh, let's take for instance, uh, when someone comes for, to me uh, and uh, says she wants a, probably a dress, then I say probably $50. She'll say, I, that's too much. I. So sometimes, as uh, most fashion designers used to do, they would try to do something that is cheap. So I think it's a mindset that uh, we, we have to change. So we have the mindset that if you buy something that's been sewn by a local designer, it should be cheap. Yeah. Therefore, designers mean. can't charge what they want to charge for good quality. Yeah. But if you I don't know about that. Do you agree with that? Um, sorry, I, I don't agree with that. Um, why I disagree is um, whenever you do any piece, you, you never know where that piece will take you to. Because the reference that you get from the piece will take you to places for a cheap quality. Um, um, maybe, I don't know if you don't mind, I can tell you or talk about um, an artist who produced um, a transcript and he was charged, um, he was, he charged little money out of it and he was offered big money and he said, no, I want to be part of the film and they tried to deny and because they wanted to frustrate him and then he was now offered a little money and they accepted. From the little money he became famous. Even today he's still famous, he's a millionaire, he's got a lot of money. So sometimes you need to take little monies and then in future you build someone. your name. You build your name. Yeah. You because it can, something and it can also work the other way around, surely, where if you're producing quality, there's no way I'm going to deny paying you that fifty dollars that you're charging. Your product must equate to what you're selling. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yes. I don't know if I would try and negotiate with someone and say if you've produced something that looks expensive, feels expensive, the finish is unquestionable. Surely you'll pay for it. Okay, uh, I think uh, mm. the, the argument then lies within uh, two, 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 two problems. Mm. The first issue is when you're saying you, you're coming for a, for, for a designer made clothing, it's specifically made for you. Mm -hmm. Then there are those commercially made, the, those that are made in bulk. Okay. Adding my local designer. Adding my local designer. Right, okay, so there's two different, yeah. I get you, right. So if it's a piece that is mainly made for yes. you, yes. sometimes it costs a little bit. Okay. That there is the difference. But if you see uh, probably those commercially made with those uh, Shinda Zakarembera and the yeah, likes. Yeah, I mean, what is there, that? There is the problem with it. You know? Pro but the, also it, it, it doesn't go to the fashion designer. Mm. Because I design, but there is someone that sews the cloth. Right. So The it whole goes, value chain needs yes. to be in support of one another. Yeah, exactly. And be able to produce quality. Yeah. Um, we're going to have to wrap up the segment. Um, uh, but we're going to come back to you as soon as we come back. Um, so we're going to take a quick break on My Future tonight. I'm Ravenik. Well, do stay tuned as we continue with our engaging debate as young people, our pioneers, the leaders of tomorrow, my future and theirs. Okay. Um, we're going to find out more of their ideas and thoughts. They are from the Chinoy University of Technology. Stay tuned. Welcome back to My Future. I'm Ruven Eko and tonight we're in studio with the students from the Chinoy University of Technology. We are discussing and bouncing off ideas because you are the innovators. Uh, you know, you're part of the STEM revolution, right? As science students, um, what were your thoughts and feelings when STEM was rolled out? When you heard that other people are now getting their school fees paid? When you were in lower six, that didn't happen. But here you are, you know, about to graduate from the Chinoy University of Technology. So what were your thoughts around that when it first came out? I mean, do you feel that this revolution is going to really change Zimbabwe? Is it going to industrialize us? 
are we really headed where we want to be? Yeah, I, I think the STEM uh, initiative is a very good initiative in terms of driving people towards uh, where we need to go as a nation because we need to start industrializing. Uh, we need to start going where the rest of the world is going, which is uh, uh, maybe properly grooming our manpower practically. So the STEM initiative uh, is answering those, those questions very well. And I'm actually sorry to see that it rolled out when I'm almost through <laughs> with school. But yeah. at least we're part of the revolution of and we are very excited about it. My sister is actually part of it. So right. I'm, I'm very excited Good. about it. Good. Gazri and Dembele. Yes. <laughs> okay. No, I like this. I think um, having understood what each of you represent and as you said, different aspects of our economy, different aspects of, you know, industrialization. Um, I want to understand now how holistically, you know, we live in an economy where there's so many young people that are unemployed and you are some of the few that have decided to take on science and become creators and innovators. And hopefully you already work with a team of 10, you said. Hopefully by the year 2018, you will have grown your company where you're employing other young people. So I want to know what you feel are some of the biggest challenges that young people in Zimbabwe have, especially as startups, as business startups. What are the biggest challenges that you face? The brick walls that you run into every day where you're just like, oh, I wish this would change. Okay, uh, yeah. on, on, that, uh, on that issue, mm. personally, I would say the issue of funding. Right. Because, uh, I've been in existence for almost a year now. Mm -hmm. And the, ha, I can say the challenge that uh, has derailed most of our business, to be honest, was uh, finance. Uh, when it comes to funding our business, we had to do contributions amongst us. And those contributions are not coming from the students. They're coming from the parents. The parents are paying school fees, mm -hmm. and they had also to contribute so that we, we, we will, uh, contribute the, the capital so that right. at least we start somewhere else. Right, right. But uh, at least for, uh, here and there, we've been getting support in terms of uh, logistic wise. And but when, for for example, my business, you require machines. But uh, up to date, I think I have almost four machines. But to be honest, seeing uh, I got that money from someone else, ah, uh, it's problematic. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think as young uh, young entrepreneurs, I'm calling for for for, for the external stakeholders probably to support students entrepreneurship because okay so let me understand how this would work you know mm. because that is almost like you would like money to help start up your businesses which is not going to fall from the sky mm -hmm. so are you interrogating perhaps some of the existing youth policies like the youth fund and stuff like that where you can apply if you have a good idea where you come in as well helping young people mold the idea in a way that is marketable that is profitable right um so what are you who exactly would you want to just give you money to start up your business okay uh, and on what grounds okay uh i'm not uh, attacking any mm. police by the way but uh no no it's not about attacking i'm okay. saying is, are those the policies <laughs> you're appealing to okay it's uh, saying who are you speaking I've, to I, I, personally i've tried to apply <laughs> for those kind of funding mm -hmm. but unfortunately i failed Mm. I don't know within the systems where I failed or... How do you think you have to do it? Oh. You have to do it business plan. Okay. <laughs> she tried to help, but <laughs> there's a certain extent that she could want. Right. She'd got uh, when, when it comes to... This, she set up the systems and everything. Right. But when it comes to the money aspect, uh, I think it's, it's now a, a culture that is within the country that uh, whenever you invest in youth, obviously they'll squander the money. But uh, which we often um, do. Um, let me let me just chip in there. Um, the problem we have, the corporate world is there. They've ushered monies before, and that money, those monies have been abused. Um, what I'm appealing to the corporate world or to funders is, please don't give money to people who cannot produce products, because. Um, if you give money to someone who wants to buy Porsche cars, then you are ruining the corporate world. Or but the how funders. can you tell? I mean, if somebody puts in their application, right? And if somebody has not got a product to prove it, one, they might have a brilliant idea, but they just need that funding to get started, right? Mm -hmm. Two, how can you tell that even though this person has a successful product on the market, we can give their money, how do you know they're not going to go and pay Lobola for their wife? Okay, buy their mom the car she's always wanted and then go on holiday to a country they've always wanted to visit. How can you tell the character of a young person? Okay, how you tell? Uh. 
there is a lot of corruption when it comes to issuing of those disbursement of them funding. Mm-hmm. Um, if anything is done in a straightforward way, uh, let's say you're asking to submit a project proposal, and then that project proposal goes through all the channels and it is scrutinized. I'm telling you, you never go wrong. Mm. Um, so, but we are out of time at this juncture, conveniently. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're going to have to cut off at this point. But I want to thank all of you for, for coming to the show tonight. All right. That's it from us on My Future this evening. Um, of course, there will be more of this same time next week. That's it from me. I'm Ruven Eko. Good night for now. Be good. If you can't be good, be safe. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uti, uti,